As value voters, as conservatives, as Americans, I gather with folks like us in meetings and rooms, and there's a lot of concern. People are worried, and they're afraid, and they see an uncertain future. They see an unsecure future with a lot of the things that are swirling about in our great nation. They know that this government-centric viewpoint of this administration and the Congress and the federal takeover of so much and more by the hour, more by the week, more by the day is corrosive to our culture. It's corrosive to our individual spirit and our spirit of freedom. But do not get discouraged. Keep the faith and have heart because remember, God is the God of all. He's the God of the White House, of the Congress, of state capitals, of school board meetings, city council meetings, all of it. So our job as value voters and concerned citizens is to get up each day, to be faithful, to work hard. And our job is to put in our best effort. And God owns the result. So do not lose heart. In addition to thanking and acknowledging God, another important value that we need to articulate strongly and boldly and effectively is the value of respecting and protecting life at all stages of life. I am proud to stand for life as a governor. I'm proud to stand for life each year on the anniversary of Roe versus Wade on the steps of our capital to defend life as a value and as a principle, but I'm also proud that we've made progress on this issue, even in a state like Minnesota. And we shouldn't be afraid of this issue. This issue is a cornerstone issue for our culture, for our society. If we can't stand for protecting and defending life and respecting life, then all else is lost because it is foundational. Life is a blessing. It is a precious gift that's been given to us and it needs to be respected and protected. In Minnesota, we've done a number of things. I won't go through them all, but one that I'm most uh, particularly proud of, and it's been very impactful, is I proposed and signed into law the so-called Women's Right to Know Bill, which provides women important information who are considering the uh, abortion, and it also provides a waiting period for them to consider their decision that, combined with many other measures and efforts of good-hearted people all across Minnesota, has significantly decreased the number of abortions performed in my state, and it's a very effective piece of legislation. But as we discuss this issue, we should always remember that this is about changing hearts and about changing minds. As we change hearts and change minds, changes in laws will follow. Changes in members of Congress will follow. Changes in the courts will follow. But it starts with changing hearts and minds. So we need to be loving and effective in the way that we communicate our views because we have convinced each other. Now we need to convince more to join our cause. Another value I want to just speak to you briefly about is very important, and that is the value of respecting and defending the Constitution of the United States of America. We stand for the principle of a limited and effective government and a measure of the fidelity to that principle is making sure that the Constitution is remembered in its original intent and that the Constitution is the measure of the limited and effective government. There's lots of ways to do it, but in a really important way is to make sure that the people that get appointed judges are strict constructionists and don't make up the law on the back of a napkin. A really important example of this is defending and protecting traditional marriage. All domestic relationships are not the same, and traditional marriage needs to remain elevated in our society and in our culture. Marriage should be defined as between a man and a woman, and I sponsored that legislation when I was in the Minnesota legislature, and we should make sure that the people are heard on this, that the Constitution is heard on this, not courts who are making up the law in the back room.
Now, this is not some radical notion or some extreme notion. My goodness, when it's been put to the vote of the people, even in left of center places like Oregon and California voted twice for traditional marriage. If they can support traditional marriage in California, we should do it all over this country. I'm very concerned that the direction that President Obama's administration is headed is in the direction of activist judges. And we need to do all that we can to slow that down and stop it and bring strict instructionists to the bench. Another important value is the value of living within our means and being responsible with our finances as a nation. It is a measure of, again, a limited and effective in the proper scope of government. I read an article today. I read an article today that said that within 10 years, it is likely that the debt of the United States of America will be 70 to 80 percent of the entire gross domestic product of our nation. Not long ago, our United States Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, was in communist China on rhetorical bended knee, pleading with the Chinese to continue to buy our debt because if they don't, our ability to pay our bills would be jeopardized. We go around the world asking foreign sovereign wealth funds to support our debt so we can pay our bills. Is that the United States of America that you want to live in? There are many just unbelievable examples of the reckless and irresponsible spending that's taking place in Washington, D.C., but one that really gets my goat is the cash flow clunkers program. Now think about this. We are borrowing money we don't have, in many cases from the Chinese, to pay ourselves cash to buy cars from ourselves, from companies that we own, so someday we might be able to pay ourselves back. Does that make economic sense to anybody in this room? I mean, it's ridiculous. So, Minnesota, we've taken a very different view of how we should be fiscally responsible. We celebrated our sesquicentennial last year in Minnesota, 150 years of history in my state, and guess what? in no two-year budget cycle in the history of state ever has spending gone down in real terms until I became governor. If we're asking our citizens in these challenging times to live on flat or declining revenues, if their paycheck is shrinking or staying flat, or worse yet, if they're laid off and they don't have growing resources and they're having to tighten our belts, government should do the same thing. So, in Minnesota, in this budget, by way of example, we're reducing spending in real terms 7.6%. I've got the most vetoes of any governor, I think, in Minnesota history, and we've reduced spending by the largest margin in the modern history of the state, and we're turning that left-of-center state into a fiscally responsible state. 